long way down. What is our altitude? Precisely 100 miles above sea level, Sir Isaac. Excellent. The perfect height for a hypothetical mountain. Greetings. I am your host, Isaac Newton. On behalf of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, welcome to Satellites and You. But first, a demonstration. Uh, to explain how a satellite might orbit the Earth, I propose this experiment back in the 17th century. Here we are on top of a hypothetical mountain 100 miles high. And here a great cannon of the finest manufacture pointing straight at the horizon. Usually when you fire a cannonball, it will fall to the ground sooner or later. But if we fire the cannonball fast enough toward the horizon, a remarkable thing happens. We've propelled our cannonball to nearly 18,000 miles per hour. At this great speed, a strange event occurs as the cannonball begins to fall back toward the Earth. The Earth is curved, a sphere, and the curve of the Earth matches the curve of the cannonball's fall. The cannonball can't fall any faster, and the ground continues to curve away under its path. Thus, the cannonball falls forever, circling round and round. It's become a satellite of the Earth. Of course, there is no 100-mile-high mountain and no such giant cannon. Instead, we have these huge rocket vehicles to reach orbital height and velocity, truly extraordinary machines. Recently, I was given the opportunity to see for myself satellites being constructed and prepared for orbit. I discovered that modern satellites are not mere cannonballs, but ingenious devices that enhance our daily lives. Looking down from a low Earth orbit, it's possible to do many things, such as detecting mineral deposits, finding fish in the middle of the ocean, and even checking on crops grown all over the world. In order to place the cameras as close to the Earth as possible, these observation satellites just skim the surface of the Earth's atmosphere at altitudes between 100 and 500 miles above sea level, distances less than a tenth the diameter of our planet. But a satellite in high orbit, 22,300 miles from the Earth's surface, nearly three times the planet's own diameter, will seem to remain motionless overhead. A satellite in this geostationary orbit hovering overhead can monitor and photograph the weather, producing these satellite photos that you see in your local newspaper and on TV. Satellites in geostationary orbit also provide nearly instantaneous telephone and television communication worldwide. From here at Network Ground Control, television signals are transmitted by these large parabolic antennas you see next to TV stations and on mobile trucks. Thus, television signals are relayed to and from satellites in high Earth orbit. Satellites make it possible for us to cover news stories live anywhere on the planet. Stories that in my day took weeks or even months to reach us can now be seen and heard as they happen around the nation or around the world. In the future will come the space station to provide even greater progress toward understanding our universe. How I envy the men and women who will be working here. Think of the experiments I could perform. But I must leave these discoveries to younger, wiser generations, perhaps even one of you. But I've already taken too much time, and the future is about to begin.
My colleague informs me that my time is up. I sincerely hope these few minutes have helped you understand satellites and how they help us in our daily lives. How was that? Did I make myself clear, do you think? Hmm. Relatively. On behalf of NASA, this is Isaac Newton reminding you that what goes up does not always come down, unless, of course, its job is done. Do you think they understand the gravity of the topic?